Hey, and I said, so what you got there? What kind of eating a lot of candy there? What kind of candy you got? And the, and I'm not lying to you. Leon will tell you because we were both laughing. The kid just looked at me he's like, ha, ah, and bit into his chair. <laughs> and I was just like, what, you fucking run out of candy? You in your chair now? And Leon was like, come on, man. Leave that kid alone. I'm like, what the kids? Yeah, what I have I do, a man? feeling he might be mentally challenged because in my um, old high school, we were the we were one of the best high schools for like special ed, and they were kind of like that. So, yeah. Well, I wasn't about to fuck with that kid. I was nice to him. I played peekaboo with him as much as you wanted to because he was he looked like a little Samoan. I'd be goddamn if he's going to pull some retard strength on me and beat the shit out of me. <laughs> I was like, hey, man, you did yeah, shit. I gave him a couple of dollars before he left. Just so you know, make well, sure at least you were classy me. about it. I was. I was like, you know, those Brits. I was classy. So how can I help your little mad ass today? And by the way, <laughs> you stop talking shit. I took your, you know, last week I didn't take your calls and you just got... All, you really got like angry about him. You were bad sport about that. Once we ended the show, you I was like, this show Corey. Sucks. Corey, let me let me tell I, you. I'm never call. being serious. I'm joking most of the time. Okay, it's like you got a little retardation going on yourself. Then hey, no, <laughs> I just like to joke a lot. All right, how can I help you today, S- Stephanie? Okay, so in light of the rapture, oh my God, yeah. Um, what's the craziest doomsday thing that people have done that you've ever seen? Oh man, those people that bought Nike sneakers and cut their nuts off that's the craziest fucking thing i've ever heard did that really happen from what i understand now that might be an urban legend but i forgot the name of the of the group somebody help me with the name of that group it was a doomsday group or a cult that they bought nike shoes and the last and i heard that they that the the men in the group castrated themselves the haley's comet people, <laughs> that's right the haley's comet people now i don't know <laughs> <laughs> you got to promise. You got to promise me something really fucking awesome before I cut my nuts off. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> exactly. I don't know what kind of proof they gave them. I don't know what kind of Kool Aid they they drank, but they must have told them some really good shit for them to say. Oh yeah, that's a worth. That's worth a couple of testicles. Yeah, let me cut my so shit off right now. If someone gave you like uh, five million dollars, would you do it? Would I cut my testicles off? Yeah. I mean, you can probably reattach it or something, but would you do it? Five million dollars to like sit up here. Are we talking about like, like not not like not like through a surgical method, like giving me like a butter knife and saying, "Here's five million dollars for you to cut." Yeah, just getting a, a nice clean kitchen knife and cutting well, it off right no, there I for can, five million dollars. Stop right there, because I'm telling you, no, <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Would, would you take five million million dollars for, for, if somebody told you to cut one of your breasts off? No, no, okay, you got to no. think about it. Oh, no, yeah. Don't, don't even. The fact that you had to think about it just says, uh, you know, you you might. And that's. Really... I mean, on one hand, I want to be rich, but on the other th- the other hand, I hate pain. Yeah, I, you know what? The thing is, I want to be rich too, but I want my nuts to be intact so I can enjoy my riches. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I always. Yeah, you know I, I I get what you're saying. I'm like my brother. The, um, my brother says he always says this and i don't think he really means it i mean i think you get to a point you're old enough to where it doesn't even matter as long as you can eat and shit and you're okay but my brother always had a saying once the day that my dick cannot do anything is the day that i'm I, i'm i'm dying that's that's the rapture for him <laughs> you know so that's yeah like why. when a guy when a guy loses their penis that's like there's no meaning of life for them anymore it's like it's really fucking awful the day you know and i'm not talking about losing it i'm talking about the day that your penis just does not even want to wake up the day your penis does not want to become erect is the day where you might as well you might as well just uh go to the rapture then and now because there's like no meaning for life anymore after that and i feel sorry for i'm sorry i hope that never happens to you Jesus, you're talking like you got a dick you got you you want to tell me something (laughs) (laughs) you felt like you you know the pain from first hand You weren't like uh, one of those uh, uh, hermaphrodite babies like Jamie Lee Curtis, were you? No. Okay. <laughs> not that you would know. You might want to check down there and see if there's a little spot where something used to be. You know, parents might not be telling you everything. <laughs> Listen, uh, no, answer is no. No amount of money can actually pay. You can give me, if they told me, Corey, you would be king of the world. Literally, you would be able to tell people what you want. They'll be at your beck and call any person on this planet. We'll have to do that. We just have to take your dick away. Or you have to cut your nuts off. I'm like, nah, nah, it's not worth it. So there you go. To answer your question, pretty straight and, f- straight and forward. Yep, I now know everything, and I think I've. I think I've been given a revelation. Thank you for answering my question, Corey. You do know everything. A man's penis is everything, and if you lose that, he loses everything. So 
Yes, you have learned everything just now. All right. I feel smarter than I already was. Thank you. Always learn something here on this call-in show. You never walk away empty-headed. You always learn a bit. You you always step in smart, but you always step away a little bit smarter. Is what I always like to think. Would you agree? Yeah. Also, I apologize in advance if my voice is cracking because, like, I'm kind of like a little sick right now. So, sorry if you're having a hard time understanding me. I understand you. You just talk crazy sometimes. It's not. There's not a matter of you being sick. You're just fucking insane in the head sometimes. What I do, know. What do you got? Um, I think I just got like my my throat is a little bit sore. Oh, you might want to check for herpes down there. You better be no, I've I'm just I telling you. Ew. I'm just telling you. I don't know what you do, Stephanie, but you I'm classier stop. than that, Corey. No, I never met you in person, but you need to stop. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and take another call if that's okay with you. May I go, Stephanie? Okay, I guess. Please. Okay. I yes, you, you may. You're not going to talk shit right. about me now when I hang up the phone, are you? No, Corey, Corey, you're you're a chill guy. I have nothing against you, and I was joking last week, okay? Don't take it seriously. Right. Okay, thank you. Now, let's go ahead and move on to, you know what? I don't think I've ever talked to this girl before. I actually see a name right here. I think this might be a girl, unless it's a guy using his mama's Skype. And that would be... Huh. Doesn't want to pick up. What's wrong here? You don't want to talk to me? Oh, Did you pick up? I'm trying to pick up. Lydia. Hello? Hello, Lydia. How are you? Hi, can you hear me? I can hear you. How are you? Okay, cool. I'm good. Lydia, have we have we met before? Yeah, I met you at the London School Party. That's right, that's right. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, you you putting up some really attractive pictures of yourself online. Really? I took them all down now because I was getting, like, some weirdos. They were, like, left two up. Oh, why'd you do that? You know, what? Well, look, you knew there were weirdos <laughs> on the site before you put the pictures up. You know I'm I'm the main weirdo up there. True, true. <laughs> you have to agree that, that quick. You're like, true? <laughs> <laughs> I'm really joking. Oh, <clears throat> how, it's been such a long time since I've talked to you. How you doing? Yeah, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. How's that boyfriend of yours? Yeah, he's good. We're going to come to uh, Spill.com, actually. Are you? Mm-hmm. I thought it because I read something from uh, your post that you couldn't make it, but you're actually going to show up. Yeah, I'm going to come now. Yeah, it'd be good. Oh, my God. This is such a joy. Wait a minute. Hold on. I'm going to do a little dance right here. Oh, look at Lydia come to Spill. Okay? Lydia come to Spill. <laughs> go see you. Lydia and the boyfriend. What's your boyfriend's name again? Daniel. He's such a sweet guy, too. Yeah, he's really good. He's a big old fucking teddy bear, that guy. Oh. I know. I, you better be nice to that man. I might steal him away from you when you bring him here. We'll see. We'll see. If, you miss, if I see you mistreating him, I'm just gonna come up to him like you don't need her. You need a real. Are you gonna try steal him away from I me? Mean, he's a nice guy. He got sexy, All right. He's got sexy eyes. <laughs> I'll let him know that you said that. I'll let him know. Even a straight man like me who hasn't cut his penis off yet is can't resist that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, how can I help you, Lydia? I'm so ha- really, I'm so happy that you uh, that you come to Spill.com. That's going to be nice. It's going to be a lot of fun. Cool. You don't, um, don't mind mixing it up with about 110 people here in about 110 degree heat? No, I'm looking forward to it. All right. All but then again, it's been really hot here. But um, no, I need some sun. Oh, it, it never gets hot over there in London. What are you talking about? No, it does. It does. It's hot at the moment. Oh, you know what? Speaking of warm weather, I think I'm coming there in August. We might have a little party going on in August. Sounds good. I'll definitely come. I hope so. You know, London isn't London anymore unless I see Lydia. So, just letting you oh. you made an impression on me. Are you? Oh, you, you're more than welcome. Oh, come nice. around. So, how can I help you today, Lydia? Um, I just meant to ask. You probably get this a lot, but um, if you could choose any character in a film... Um, who would you be? For example, you know, sometimes you're watching a film and you're like, oh my God, I want to be that person because they're living the life right now. Like, what? who would you be? Oh, man. You know what? I want to be... Oh, what's that guy's name? Did you ever hear about that movie, what is it, Limitless? Oh, yeah. The guy, um, Bradley Cooper. Bradley Cooper. I want to be Bradley Cooper in that movie so bad. I mean, that guy was just so cool. You know, I want to be Bradley Cooper in that. I want to be Bradley Cooper in The Hangover. 
You know, he's like yeah, the, but, the pretty boy, cool guy of the group. Yeah, hmm. but I don't know. But the thing is, if you knew the drugs had that effect, would you still take them? Yes. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> yes, I would. I'm, what are you, you talking to me? I take, yeah. I've taken drugs that don't have those kind of positive effects. I, I've taken <laughs> drugs that, have, you know, in that movie, there are drugs that make him, the, the drugs in that movie make him smarter. Open, yeah. open up the, you know, the rest of the, what, 90% of his brain. I've taken drugs that have made me stupider. <laughs> you know, so, yeah, yeah, I would. You're talking to me. I've, take, I've taken drugs that have taken away 90% of the 10% of the brain that I'm using. So, yes. Yes, I would. Cool. What about you? Who would you want to be in a movie? Um... Do you know who I really like? You know in that movie, Planet Terror? You know the girl from Charmed? And she's got like a gun for a leg. Yeah, you want to be her? You want I don't know her. what her name is, but I, I watched that film and I was like, she's amazing. Like, yeah. if I had no legs, I'd just be her, basically, because she's hot and, yeah. Let me see. Um, what's it? She's, uh, Rose McGowan, I think is her name. She's a... Yeah, I think she's Robert Garrett. Rodriguez away from, from, uh, from his wife. Really? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm so not basically, surprised. you wanna you wanna be a home wrecker with a gun for a leg? Basically, basically. Yeah. No, I'm really joking. No. You know who else I wanna be? Who? I wanna, I wanna be Morgan Freeman in any movie. He's good. He's really cool. Yeah, I wanna be. First of all, I wanna be Morgan Freeman and want it just so I can say, shoot this motherfucker, because he says he's so cool. <laughs> And then I want to be Morgan Freeman in every other movie because Morgan Freeman, look, Morgan Freeman is, he's God. He's got a great voice. The only movie I would not want to be Morgan Freeman in is Driving Miss Daisy because I don't want to have to, like, drive a white Jewish woman around and asking her permission to pee. <laughs> you know, or, or as he says, Miss Daisy, can I pull over and make water? You know, I don't want to do that. That's the Jay, Jay. I want to. I want to get. I, I want to see Morgan Freeman. I want to slap him. And say, what the fuck were you thinking doing that role, man? Come on. <laughs> but I want an Academy Award. I don't give a fuck. Ask this woman if you can go piss. How dare you, sir? How dare you? Nah, you know, there's a there's, there's a lot of movies where I look, I look at a guy, especially a guy in the, who's a badass in the leading role, and I, yeah. you know, I always want to be that guy. I always want to be the. I always want to be the hero. I always want to be the charismatic guy who gets all the girls. You know, I'm just, I'm no different from anybody else. I want to be that guy. Occasionally, I want to be the woman with uh, a gun for a leg, too. You know, I'm not above that. Yeah. Uh, so, so, yeah. Cool. But that's a good question. You know what? I really, 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 really am looking forward to seeing you guys, especially coming uh-huh. all, all the way from London to join us over here. It's going to be fun. You're going to have a good time. And I want you to leave here, and I want you to tell all your friends of what you have seen here. I will, I will. All right. Cool. Well, it's great talking to you. Thank you for taking my call. Oh, it was my pleasure. Yeah. Yeah, that lovely... I wish I'd saved this call for last, because that lovely British accent, I would have saved it for closing the show, but we'll do that next time. All right. All right, um... Go, bye. Tally ho. All right, so... That was a sweet... She really is a sweet girl. I met her when I was over in London back in... Oh, when was I in London? I can't even fucking remember. Back in January, we had a real good time. Had a really good time. That's the time when we said we just wanted to hang out. I told people, hey, let's hang out. I'm going to be in London. People, come on out and hang. About 60 people came out. And about 10 of them we couldn't even get a hold of because we got kicked out of the bar that we were going to intentionally have our party in. And we had to leave and all a bunch of other people showed up and we were gone already and people were cursing our names and calling us all kinds of sons of bitches. But we'll make that up in London in August, hopefully, when we have another party. Okay, so... <clears throat> ah! <clears throat> Who am I talking to next? Huh? Somebody give me a little hint. Damn, people just... When I hang up, people just like, me, me, me. Me, 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 me. All right, we'll take one from this person's begging. They're like, please, Corey, take my call. If I can find you, I'm not going to say who you are yet. Cause I'm, oh, there you are. There you are running from me, little area code 508. Corey. Yes. What's up? I don't know. D- you tell Dude, me, Dude, damn, there's so many times I've called, and it's the first time being, it's being answered. It's awesome. Well, congratulations, and look at this. You did it right before the rapture kicked in. Right before yeah, you yeah. died. I'm, I'm preparing. I'm like I'm preparing Rose. It. Welcome to the rapture, baby. You're going to die. 
So what are you doing for the Raptors today? Uh, That's not my question, but I'm just curious. What am I doing for the Raptors? I don't know. Cutting off my balls kind of sounds fun right now. Oh, shit. Like yeah. that, that movie Antichrist? Yeah. Oh, oh that shit. That was ball crushing right that, there, dude. Dude, that, nah, that movie just messed with me too much. Um, I'm, I'll, I'll just be quick because uh, I know a lot of people are trying to get answered. But uh, uh, Who is this, by the way? Well, Mark from... Uh, it's uh, my 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 screen name's the Dork Knight. The Dork. Okay, I know who you are. How you doing, man? Good talking to you. How uh, can I help you? Pretty good. Uh, I was just kind of always wanted to ask um, mm-hmm. if if you could pick like one like music producer or just any music artist to to score a movie, kind of like what Trent Reznor did. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, who do you think would be? Because you you answered a question before uh, real quick on uh, one of the live shows. When I said, uh, who's your favorite producer? And you said, you, I, said I said, like, Mad Lib or Ninth Wonder. And you yeah. said probably Mad Lib. Yeah. I always thought Mad Lib or Ninth Wonder would be excellent to actually score a movie. I don't mm-hmm. know how it would turn out, but I guess I was just curious who you would think, like, any any music artist that well, you, you know, think might Mad, do. <laughs> Mad Lib did score a movie. And a lot of people got on my ass oh, about sh- that because I, cause I talked about how I said I don't like I, – I said I'm not crazy about sampling and I wish people would move on. I, that doesn't mean yeah. that I don't exclusively hate sampling. And when I hear sampling done well, I like yeah. it when I hear it done creatively. I don't want people. I, I do like original music more. But here's the deal. Yeah. Uh, uh, Ninth Wonder, I think, does amazing things with the samples that he has and makes and makes just good beats to go with it. Oh yeah, yeah. But uh, Madlib, Madlib is like some he. I would say that that guy is some sort of weird genius when it comes to music, man. He he does he a lot of sampling. He does, a, yeah, he, he does. He does a lot of sampling. Everything. Yeah, but he he does you know, jazz he, and everything. But he loves jazz. He his father's a musician, and he taught himself yeah how, how to play drums. And I think yeah, he, that's... he teach himself how to play another instrument. I can't remember, but he's you know he's he, he wants to be a real musician. He's making efforts to do that. I think the guy's a musical genius in some ways. Exactly. I'm always surprised that people don't hear enough of him because. I mean, he does everything from, like, what you said, jazz, like, yesterday's new quintet to uh, yeah. Quasimodo. And uh, and what was the movie that he, he scored? Was it, like, a, at was it kind of like a... Well, at Sundance, I saw a documentary about a tribe called Quest. And oh, I've been wanting to see that. It was it was great. If you're, if you're, if you're a tribe oh, I fan... I love that. Yeah, well, you need to yeah, see yeah. this thing, because you're a tribe fan, you'd love this, but... He did. Not, he he did the original music for that, and oh, you know, shit. yeah, and you and it's and it's done. I mean, it's very you know low key, but it's done very well. And I, I would say though, but if I wanted somebody to score a movie for me, yeah, it would be. Are you familiar? And I've, I've answered this question before, so if you've heard it before, people, bear with me. But have you ever heard of Gold Frap? Gold Frap? Yeah, Gold Frap. I'm not, I don't even think I no. I don't think I've ever heard of. You've heard the music before. Yeah, like I think there's a co-commercial where they have uh, this song from her. It goes, I say ooh la 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 la. I say la 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 la. You ever heard that? That does sound familiar, actually. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, for her first album, which I think is called Felt Mountain, she yeah. did it with a producer named Will Gregory. And Will Gregory did a lot of the, uh, or, the, the orchestration, or the music that sounds like orchestration for that album. And Will Gregory yeah. is a guy that always said, you know what, that's a guy that I would like to come in and score, at least if it's the right movie, score the right movie for me. And I have an idea for a film huh. that would actually require some sort of uh, very sweeping, beautiful orchestrations, man. I mean, I, I don't know what kind of music you're into. I'm into everything. Same, okay. same. So Goldfrap is... Uh, Goldfrap is it, it her music is it covers a lot of things it's rock synth pop uh she does uh, she she brings in like classic overtones of uh uh, uh of i guess a, a little bit of jazz a little bit yeah. of uh, uh i mean there's even uh, some songs that she brings in elements of influences from the 60s and and, and beyond and it's i mean she's a very versatile yeah. musician and her music covers all that ground and it's like I, I really appreciate th- that about her, but her first album is one I really love a lot because it it's, it brings in, like I said, is a, uh, a you know it brings in a lot of orchestrations and mixes it ends with with her with her vocals, which are, and I love her vocals on that album too. So yeah, you should check it out, man. Yeah, yeah, I was about to say because I, I know I've uh, heard you like mention that that uh, a couple to Goldfrap a couple times, but I never really knew who they were. 
I probably should have just checked them out on YouTube. I'm sure they have some stuff on there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not for everybody, you know. It's but and she and like I said, her music is very diverse. You like, I don't think, you know, not not any one album is the same as the previous one or the one after that. But yeah, so, yeah. So yeah, that's that's what I would say, man. I've always said that I would love to get this guy Will Gregory to come in and uh, do the orchestration or the score for a film of mine. So how about you? Who would you want to have somebody do it? Um. Well, I know I did already mentioned Mad Love, like kind of like what we were talking about and. For one, I, I've been wanting to check out that Tribe Called Quest documentary, and now that you said he actually scored the movie, I, I just have to see it now. But um, it's kind of hard to say because I know I actually used to think Trent Reznor would be perfect, and then once I saw The Social Network, it was just flawless, in my opinion, for his score. Yeah. And uh, so I'm, I'm trying to think. Like I always just kind of wanted a, a Mad Lib score because I just I, I love that guy, but... Yeah, now that he already scored a movie, now I have to check it out. And uh, you know, there's there's just there's really a lot of artists out there that, um, like I even sometimes thought I don't listen to them a lot, but like even like Radiohead, like Tom York, I don't know how they would. Oh well, well Johnny John Greenwood actually did. There will be blood. So. Yeah. Yeah, oh from uh from Radiohead, yeah. Yeah, you yeah. Know, I love these musicians who go out and score movies, man, like Danny Elfman. You know do you know Danny yeah. Elfman's band before he started scoring films? I actually don't know his band, but I I love his his scores. Danny, yeah, Danny Elfman was in a band called Oingo Boingo. And uh you'll, oh, sure. you, have you ever heard of a movie called Weird Science? Yeah. He, yeah. His band did the like well, it was on the soundtrack for that song. They were all, I think their song was the main song for that soundtrack. Weird science, <laughs> from my heart and from my hands. Why don't people? I never knew that. My intentions. Yeah, you know. Uh, never knew you even had a band. I never knew that. Yeah, Oingo Boingo. Man. Yeah. He was a yeah. He in the eighties. He was in a you know kind of a, a weird, little weird quirky band, rock band called Oingo Boingo, and he went on to like become uh you know a composer i guess you know the other thing if i want to get like a hip-hop guy to score something for me uh yeah you know yeah the, 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 i think you could tell with me like ninth wonder and mad lib would be a given yeah but i would also like some uh, some people who really do a lot of instrumental and that would be people like uh oh, i love a lot of stones throw people peanut butter wolf oh yeah like yeah that. but uh oh yeah like, pb uh, wolf oh yeah pb wolf would be one um the other one j rock like, uh, and Oh, Jay. Well, you know, uh, I'm, I'm so I'm, I'm so uh, uh, sad that uh, what's his name? Jay Dilla. Jay Dilla died, man. Because I know uh, that is a guy. He would have like, been perfect. Oh, Jay Dilla would have been awesome, man. But also uh, Nikolai. You ever heard of Nikolai from? Oh, Nikolai. Yeah, he does foreign exchange and foreign everything. Foreign exchange. Yeah, Nikolai would. Be yeah. Great. And then uh, I was trying. Go ahead. Oh no, I was just I was just saying uh, I was trying to think of. Others and you ask me, and, and now that I'm talking to you, I just I had my I had like a mind mind freeze or whatever. Well, but do you, you know the, uh, another guy that would be good who who's also expanded as a musician would be DJ Shadow. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember he did some stuff for like Most Def and stuff, and he was uh he had some really good tracks on there. Yeah, have you ever, I, yeah, have, I, have you ever heard the album in, Introducing? Uh, which no. uh, introduce that begins with an E. Boy, you need to catch up on some hip hop, man. Get check, I, out, <laughs> check out Introducing, classic. Classic, D, cla- classic turntable album and, and DJ album. I mean, it's like a, it's it's amazing. You should you should check Is, that out. That's DJ Shadow's album. DJ, DJ Shadow introducing. Check that album out. He, he, I remember he came around here too, and I I missed yeah. him, but I I I always like uh, trying to catch like a Mad Lib Stones throw yeah. kind of show. Those, those are always good. But uh, yeah. so. and uh, he, I know you answered this question. I don't want to like, keep you on the phone, but. All I know is I'm, I really appreciate you uh, answering the call. I've been oh, waiting to talk for a while. A lot of people I, I wish I could make a spill.com if oh, I wasn't well, broke right now. <laughs> one day, one but, day we'll get you here. But, uh, you know, I know. it's good talking to you. And uh, that's a good question. I appreciate that. I always love talking about music. So that was that was. Yeah, nice yeah. I always, I always love uh, hearing, like, your, your taste in music and movies and everything. So keep up the uh, good work on the site and everything. I really uh Really enjoy going to the site. Well, I have, uh, I appreciate that, man. Happy Rapture Day. Yeah, you too, man. All right, I'll talk have, to you later. Have a good one. You too. Bye. Later. Well, let me see. I know I said an hour, but you know what I did? I signed up for an hour and a half, just in case I started having a good time. And you know what? I'm having a good time, so I think I'm gonna keep going. Keep keep the party going. You know what I mean? So, yes, somebody said Uncle Corey lied. Your Uncle Corey would never lie to you. 
your Uncle Corey was just horribly mistaken. He, Uncle Corey was uh, was he underestimated how good of a time he would have talking to you lovely people out there. So I'm just going to keep on going. We're going to keep on going. We got we're going to go on for another 30 minutes. All right. Is that OK with you? I'm not somebody answer me. Tell me if that's OK. I, if, if you don't say it, I'm going to I'm going to hang up. You better let me. OK. Chinga said yes. All right. Chinga, you saved the show. It's all in you. OK. Let's see. Area code five six two. Five six two. Five six two. Hello. Five six two. How you doing? Hey, how you doing, Corey? Hey, hey, how you doing? Uh, doing good. Just enjoying uh, last day on Earth. Is it a good day? I like stuff. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, it could be worse. I mean, stuck here doing homework. Yeah, yeah. I gotta go get man. I'm telling you, I, I gotta go get. A hooker and some Jamba Juice. That's on my list today. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Never paid for sex. And there's a and there's a flavor of a Jamba Juice that I really want to try that I've always stayed away from because I just didn't think I'd like it. But I'm gonna try that before I die. So uh, I'm uh, yeah. I'll probably have a sex uh, a sex. I <laughs> probably <laughs> pro- I will have a sex. I'll probably have uh, sex with a hooker and drink Jamba Juice at the same time. I never done that before. So. Mm, talk about multitasking. Multi man, got to. We only got a little bit of time left on this planet. I know, right? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. How are you doing, man? What, how can I help you? Who am I talking to, first of all? Oh, name's Carlos. Um, the last I talked to you was like a year ago, so you yeah. probably won't remember me, but. Oh, but, Carlos! Um, I'm... Carlos, man, how you doing, man? Carlos, where you been? <laughs> I'm spending every time oh. you're saying, where's Carlos? And you be, man, don't do me like that, staying away so long. You don't, you're, don't be a stranger. Come on, don't do it, man. You're uh. just, just, you know, I thought you neglected me, thought you abandoned me. Carlos, how you doing, man? How can I help you today? Oh, um, well, I, I just had a, a curious thing, like your opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a Batman question. So, um, yeah, you know, yesterday they released that first look of uh, Bane, Tom Hardy as Bane. Uh, I got to be honest. I didn't think they'd release an image so soon already. Uh, they haven't even filmed that long. I knew somebody was going to so ask me guess... about that, but go ahead. Oh yeah. Yeah, I knew somebody was going to. Yeah. Ask yeah. Uh, I guess I just want to know. Um, even though it's only a first look, and obviously it's we don't really see his the whole his whole body, but what do you think of his look, Nolan? Uh, Nolanized Bane. What do you think of the look? I think that it's so in shadow that we can't really tell anything yeah yeah he looks like he's wearing a skeletal mask you know because it looks like he has a skeleton mask on that for his bane mask so I, you know i don't know man because let me tell you something the first time i saw the joker wasn't happy with it and that's just going by the image alone so i'm not going to sit up here and go by an image alone for bane bane can end up being a really incredibly badass character and i don't want to make any judgments until i actually see that character in action in film Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you know what yeah. I mean? I mean, it's again, it's, it's it's that same thing that everybody continues to say. Have faith in Nolan. He, if, you know, if that's the look he wants I to know. go with, it's probably for a reason. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I and Nolan, I trust. You know, and Nolan, you and, trust. Oh yeah, and uh, I guess the one thing everyone's curious now is, um, how about a little bit of Anne Hathaway as Catwoman? You know, let's uh, let's saying. see her wearing some, let's see some some tight leather on her. You know. Yeah, I don't want to see you know? no god. You know, yeah, look, I don't want to see no big old sweaty man. Show me, show me some ass. And some titties. <laughs> you know, Unless you're into that. Some big old titties, boy. I want to see that. I want some tight titties. <laughs> yeah, some uh, definitely, definitely a choice. I wasn't expecting though. I mean, not that I'm complaining. I mean, uh, look how people complain about Heath Ledger. Even I'll admit, I was a little skeptical, but uh, he. He kicked our asses, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I really so. don't want to make any judgment, you know. I, 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 and and listen. Here's here's the thing, man. Did you expect anything less? I mean, when we pe- when people saw Bane, of course he didn't look like anything you've seen before. I mean, what we, it's Christopher Nolan. What were you expecting? Huh. Uh, definitely not anything from Batman and Robin. <laughs> yeah, well, definitely no. No, of course but. not. I mean, so but, um, I, I don't know, man. That, you know, it's really we can sit up here and pass judgment, say things, second guess, do all huh. that stuff. But there's nothing we can do until we see that movie. Uh, but right now, 
I don't. I, I I love what Christopher Nolan has done. He's made his own version of Batman. Like I've always said, it's a, it's a, it's it's his own graphic novel. It's his own movie version of a graphic novel where they've done their interpretation of Batman, and I like what they've done, and I'm very excited to see what they do with Bane, and I'm going to just leave it at that until the movie comes out. Oh yeah, definitely. 